so the, our platform is dealing with different types of uh, omics data, uh, sequencing, um, uh, mass spec data, uh, and then sequencing, it could be RNA seq, genetic data, like chip seq, uh, DNA methylation data, so forth. Uh, small molecules, libraries of small molecules and three-dimensional uh, structures of proteins. And uh, uh, the general task is uh, to integrate all this data because uh, what researcher typically has is a, a set of different types of data of different nature and it would like to understand what, what actually, what's the meaning of all of that. And uh, this is what we, 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 are, we are calling data integration. And it means that uh, based on matching different types of data, we understand what kind of specificity in patients. OK. Uh, so uh, this is the next slide, please. Uh, uh, next slide. Can you move to the next yeah, slide? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So uh, this is the main menu of, of the platform, where on the left you have uh, processing of different types of GS data, like transcriptomics, genomics and epigenetics, uh, unsupervised analysis of junk RNA or DNA, uh, metagenomics and things like that, including uh, single cell analysis of single cell transcript. The next section is mass spectrometry, proteomics, uh, mass spectrometry, and metabolomics, uh, three dimensional structures um, of uh, small molecules, libraries of small molecules, uh, 3D structure of proteins. Uh, uh, the next uh, column data integration and modeling, and uh, we have a um, systems uh, virology um, section uh, where several models are studied, uh, uh, and uh, in virology also study of virus evolution, uh, mutation variants, and cell culture images. Uh, probably most important is data association section, uh, where Different um, multi -omic, uh, uh, different sorts of multiomics data could be integrated with, with some some biological conclusions, and I will demonstrate it. And data mining standard uh, standard tools, uh, okay, uh, in, in computer science it's called data mining. In statistics it's called machine learning. Okay, so so all things around that. Uh, Unsupervised analysis, supervised analysis, clustering, discrimination, classification, and things like that. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, this is a logical scheme of, of, of some particular analysis. This is, given case, this is RNA seq, a logical graph of RNA seq analysis. So, uh, first you have raw data. After that, you are gleaning it on the left uh, uh, from PCR artifacts, uh, errors, if, if possible. Uh, after that, uh, detection of exons, probably not, not defined in the GTF file. Uh, uh, detection of exon junction based, based on mapping, and uh, again, based on mapping, uh, isoform construction. After that, uh, a table of expression for isoform and genes, isoform uh, splice variants, of course, uh, more important, more biologically meaningful things, and differential expression. Next slide, please. Next, next slide, Ilya. Okay. 
this is how this logical scheme looks in reality on, 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 on the interface of the section. So the, the main idea is uh, to make life easy for, for biologists. Meaning, you are starting with start, uh, with start button, and after that the system is, is supporting you, showing what next button would be pressed. Each button is an algorithm. So first, first column of buttons, this is pre-processing sync, uh, uh, different types of pre-processing sync, including uh, data simulation and JS data simulation. Next column is error correction settings. Next column is mapping and uh, by different algorithms, uh, uh, detection of exons uh, as enrichment of genome regions and probably it, it could be non-coding RNAs, uh, not reported in, uh, in the GTF file, either form construction, uh, uh, table of expression, uh, of transcripts, of exons, of genes, and uh, uh, differentiation. So just clicking uh, buttons, biologist, a biologist, will create a pipeline and after that run it. Okay, even without understanding what actually uh, she is doing. Uh, because the system is supporting her and, and saying what, what button can be pressed next. And after that we'll get some results. Okay, ne next, next slide please. <coughs> Uh, one of the sections of the platform is, uh, uh, is a single cell transcriptome, analysis of single cell transcriptome. This, this is now is, uh, is becoming the most popular topic and uh, people are very interested in that. So we, we have uh, a section for analysis of this thing. Next, next slide. Okay, statistically, since uh, single, uh, single uh, cell data is, is uh, highly noisy, so uh, a lot of statistical challenges in, in filtering reads, in, in assigning reads to transcripts through barcodes uh, or through UMI, UMI uh, code, uh, assigning reads to, to, to cells, uh, and so on, quantification, normalization, until clustering of cells based on, on profile of gene expression and uh, differentiation between clusters. So each cluster would be a specific set of cells and after that visualization. Uh, and all of that is, uh, can be done with, with a similar type of interface. Again, a user is starting with start button and after that the system is just showing her what to press next. Okay, please next slide. Okay, here uh, this is uh, a result uh, actually. Uh, so on the left you have um, a portion of buttons all of them are uh, clustering algorithms. Each button is an algorithm. On the left, uh, upper left corner, and on the right, we have visualization things uh, from PCA uh, to TSNE. Okay, and the typical picture will be on the right. So you have uh, cells which are grouped in clusters. And after that, the next step is to understand uh, uh, what's the meaning of each cluster, what, what type of cells is, is there. Okay, next, next slide, please. Uh, the important part of, of the story is analysis of junk DNA uh, related to, to assembly of something unknown. Uh, it could be the Nova transcriptome assembly, it could be microbiome, 
or it can be just uh, just repeats or to, uh, pieces of transposons in in uh, in uh, RNA data or DNA. Uh, next slide. Okay, here. Uh, uh, what we have in the platform are two basic approaches, uh, the very known uh, software tools called Trinity. Uh, this, this is what is shown, uh, which is, has uh, three steps for assembling a transcriptome or, or any kind of, uh, of expressed uh, items. And our own approach, this is the next slide, which is based on uh, B, B clusters. Next slide. Okay, so uh, uh, B cluster is, is a sort of association. So we have reads or, or any sequences, and we have k mers So the task is to find a group of k mers and a group of sequences which are closely associated. What does it mean? It means, for instance, that each K-mer is participating in 80% of, of, of the sequences of the set. And each set has 70% of K-mers uh, uh, from the K-mer set. Uh, this arrangement, this association, group of association K-mers against sequences, uh, we call by B cluster, and after that we are playing with this B cluster, uh, performing uh, assembly. Next slide, please. It could be two types of assembly. Uh, uh, one type is is looking for uh, repeats, something which is something repetitive in in reads. It could be some portions of reads which are repetitive. It could be uh, real repeats like a new repeat so, or sign or line, or it can be some uh, highly expressed, for instance, non polling uh, Okay, uh, after clustering big clusters, so each big cluster is an element, and after that, uh, we are applying some special clustering algorithm, uh, uh, which is dealing uh, with uh, big data. And uh, B clusters are clustered based on uh, shared k mers for instance, in given case. And after that, all assembly is performed by the De Bruyne graph uh, method uh, only with k mers So these k mers first filtered by B clusters and by clustering of B clusters. And after that, inside each cluster, these k mers are assembled. And this assembly is, is some consensus of a repeat or whatever. Uh, ne next slide, please. Uh, alternative approach. This is transcriptome assembly, where we need uh, long, uh, long assemblies, so to say. Uh, repeats are relatively short, and then transcripts could be, could be long. So again, the same clustering is applied here, but instead of this clustering based is not on k mers but based on sequences, on reads. So two big clusters are linked together uh, are, or clustered together if they share reads inside them. Okay. And again, after that, after uh, uh, after Finding clusters of the clusters, only k mers of this of these clusters are used for assembly, and this assembly, of course, much more trustable because uh, k mers are prefiltered; they are participated in many in many reads in many sequences. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, a couple of words about clustering algorithm uh, which we developed uh, uh, and uh, it works in any metric space it means that you need only a distance for instance for big clusters uh, you do not have uh, some RN space 
you have just the distance between uh, B clusters. It, distance, it could be similarity or similarity between big, big clusters can be based on K-mers or, or based on reads. So the idea is uh, that uh, taking uh, specific points as centers and how to select the specific points as a special algorithm. Uh, after that, the neighborhood is, is uh, every neighborhood of this central point, point is studied uh, in terms of first a fractal dimension is detected for this neighborhood. And after that, for this fractal dimension, enrichment from Poisson p-value point of view, uh, uh, enrichment of this neighborhood is calculated. So the best, the best enrichment is taken as a neighborhood of this central point. And after that, all, central, all these neighborhoods are combined together by uh, uh, by uh, several methods in order to get separated clusters. And uh, this clustering algorithms uh, is applied to many kind of clustering, uh, from clustering of just sequences uh, to clustering of uh, big clusters or clustering of small molecules and uh, okay and any sort of objects where a distance could be defined somehow between the objects uh, okay uh, the next slide please okay uh, what we have in processing processing or uh, epigenetic data uh, for instance, bisulfit uh, data for uh, DNA methylation. Uh, so, uh, if to look to the first line of uh, blue uh, squares, so we have raw reads. After that, it will be specific mapping of bisulfit reads on the genome. Uh, separation of, of read alignments uh, on, on two strands. After the calculation of scores for per position, per position methylation scores uh, for both strands. And after that, segmentation of, of the genome. Segmentation in order to find enriched regions, enriched fragments, uh, which are enriched by, by methylation signals. And uh, the lower uh, line of, of uh, blue squares is something similar, but already for a contrast, a contrast between treatment and control, where uh, not a score of methylation is calculated, but a score of differentiation between treatment and control is, is calculated. Uh, okay, next slide, please. Okay, so... Uh, mm, uh, the major point here is scoring. Uh, so the scoring is based on, on some statistics. Uh, this is uh, statistics is based on Bloom's theorem for uh, uh, local log likelihood ratio, and uh, we, with with some tricks, mathematical tricks, we, we can show that some uh, that the statistics uh, a, spe a specific transformation of the specific, specific uh, statistics is uh, normally distributed, uh, normally uh, uh, O1 or normally the specific O2. After normalization of the two normal distribution, we can actually calculate a difference of this normal distribution, normalized already, uh, with the same average, with the same mean, and with the same variance. And, uh, to, and it will be after dividing to square root of two, it will be again normal distribution of one. Uh, and with that, we, we, we can get a score for differentiation between treatment and control. So for just for treatment, in order to find enriched, uh, enriched position, uh, uh, just uh, only one statistics is, is calculated. Uh, and it's that the statistic depends on how far uh, uh, observed frequency uh, is uh, from uh, from zero frequency, from, from null hypothesis. 
and for uh, uh, differentiation, we have to calculate two statistics and, and after that to transform it to different statistics and again get a score which is normally distributed. It means that it has uh, some period. Okay, uh, next, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, our algorithm for segmentation is, is a specific one. Uh, it was published in uh, 2010. Um, and uh, the main idea is that uh, this, this is binary search approach, where uh, first we are looking for the most enriched fragment, so the fragment of the genome which is most enriched by, by some signal, differentiation signal or, or initial signal for methylation. After that, we are looking for the next fragment, not intersecting with, with the first. Uh, uh, which is also enriched, uh, second level of enrichment, and so on. And the uh, trick here is that it can be done uh, very in a fast way, uh, uh, log n to n operations, and very accurately. So it means that we very accurately can detect uh, the, the margins of, of the fragments. With, with some special algorithm which is published at, at PNS. Uh, okay, so by this way we can find uh, uh, with high precision what, what fragments of the genome are methylated. And this algorithm actually is used not only for DNA methylation but also for, for analysis of cheap seq data and uh, for copy number variation signals uh, and uh, many different signals which are distributed over, over the genome. Okay, next, next slide, please. Okay, his, histone modification signal, so chip 6 signal. Uh, and uh, with, with this algorithm, we have in the pipeline several algorithms, our own and public domain, several public domain ones, as well as in, uh, in the Bissell fit methylation uh, by, by section of the platform. Uh, okay, so uh, with our algorithm, we got a very good uh, detection of typical size of nucleosome with, with, with this algorithm, with this beam S algorithm, uh, segmentation algorithm. And the segmentation, of course, is happening on two strands, and after that, the entire nucleosome, this is on the right side, uh, upper, uh, and the entire nucleosome is detected as, as, a, as a portion of the genome of those bits, uh, negative and positive. Uh, next slide, please. RNA analysis of RNA editing data. Uh, we have again several approaches, uh, public domain approaches like Jeremy or Jacuzza, uh, where uh, in one of them uh, you have to have not only RNA seq uh, data but also DNA seq in order to distinguish between uh, RNA editing and SNP uh, uh, SNPs. Uh, and our own algorithm, which is based on, on, on some specific, uh, uh, on, a, on a statistic similar to what I showed you, with serum based statistics with, with normal distribution. Uh, and uh, typically, if we don't have uh, DNA data, we're just saying that uh, if frequency, okay, or score of statistics is, is uh, uh, not high enough, uh, then probably this is RNA editing. And this, if this is extremely high, that, that uh, probably this is SNP. Okay, uh, uh, next slide, please. Uh, actually, the same statistics is applied to, to uh, detection of somatic mutation where we are playing with uh, with statistics in, in normal sample, in tumor sample, and playing with that in a special manner, we can say if there is a difference between tumor and norm, or there is no difference. 
this, this is our approach, but also we have several public domain algorithms in the pipelines which can be used uh, also. Uh, okay. Uh, now, the main topic of the story, uh, the next slide, please. In integration of multi omics data, and in ideal case, somehow linking them to, to clinical data, or at least to specificity of patients. So, uh, all of that is based on tables, on, on tables of different omics data. For instance, we can have a table of mutations on the web, just, just, just present absence, or enrichment of some fragments by mutations. This is also could be uh, omics, omics data, enrichment of fragments by, by, by mutations. Uh, gene expression data. It could be isoform expression data. It can be RNA editing or expression of microRNA and dif different types of things, including even IC50 for, for some drugs. So how to combine all of that together? And here, what, what approach we are using uh, at the, in the platform? Um, next slide, please. So uh, this is conceptual idea. The conceptual idea is based on uh, metrics of distances between samples or between patients. So, for instance, on the left, we have a table of expression values for different samples, A, B, C, D, E, F. Based on all genes, we can calculate something like a clus clustering tree for patients. And it will be something, some, uh, some patients or some samples, samples will be uh, grouped. Actually, uh, this, is a, this is just based on the distance metrics between patients according to all genes. Here the major, major word is all. Okay, uh, next, next slide, please. Now, if we will take a subset of genes, so according to all genes, it will be one type of clustering of samples on the right. According to one subset of genes, blue band, it will be it will be good. It could be different type of clustering, different type of distance method. And according to yellow subset of genes, it can be a third type of cluster. Okay, where is the truth? Uh, the next next slide, please. The truth is coming from combining different omics data together. For instance, we have a table of with with the same samples of gene expression and the table with, again, the same samples of something else, like metabolites, uh, abundance of metabolites. How to understand what clustering is, is true clustering? Uh, the idea is like that. Let us try to find a subset of genes, yellow one or orange one, and a subset of metabolites, again, orange one, which uh, according to these subsets, the clustering trees or distance matrices between uh, samples are very similar. If they are very similar, we have triple association. Namely, we have association with, of genes with metabolites, and altogether they provide specific association of, of patients in clusters. Uh, this is the idea of approach, of combining uh, different types of tables, om omics tables, multi-omics uh, data, mutation tables, RNA editing tables, uh, uh, expression micro-RNA, micro phenotypic data, clinical data for patients, 
all together in order to find this triple association as a subset of, of one features, a subset of another features, and these two subsets are linked because they, they are giving the same clustering or the same distance matrix or very close distance matrices between patients. Please, next slide. Okay, uh, on this slide you can see uh, uh, matrices, couple of matrices, where uh, which are very similar. Uh, so, so they are highlighted according to po some positive normalized score or negative score. The negative is green, positive is, is red. If to look, for instance, on the sec second row, you can see that some specific patient just separated. It is very negative, so very far from all others. So this is verti vertical green line and horizontal green line. Okay, so uh, th this is actually what what the program is, is produces, and uh, on the next slide, uh, please next slide, we can see some results uh, uh, of this type of analysis. Uh, uh, here, uh, cell lines, breast cancer cell lines, were taking altogether forty nine. Cell lines, and they were analyzed by this uh, by this method. What was found is that there is a very separate sample, which is called here HCC202, and this is left up uh, panel. It is very separate from all, all others. What uh, how it was detected? It was detected according to gene expression data, isoform expression data, mutation score data. This is actually a score of mutate of uh, of islands of mutation, and score scores of islands of RNA. If to look to these pictures, we can see for the for for selected genes which defined separation of this of this individual sample, uh, gene expression is extremely high for in, uh, for in this sample, only in this specific group, group of genes. And uh, after annotation of these genes, they are, uh, all of, uh, this group is enriched by olfactory uh, receptor activity. The same on the right with isoform expression. Again, the same uh, patients, the same sample is separated from all others. It has uh, extremely high expression, average expression across all isoforms uh, participating in the group. The same story is with mutation score. Again, the same patient is has very high score across all mutations regions, mutation regions we, we, which were selected uh, in the group. Uh, so this is average mutation score, and this is much, much higher than, uh, than all others, but only for this specific group of mutation regions. And the same with RNA. So of course, this is interesting to understand what, what does it mean, what, what, what is happening with this specific uh, cell lines. And it appears after analysis of entire, uh, okay, by this way we got uh, hundreds of, of, of these uh, subgroups. And, uh, mm, and typically this is only one, uh, one cell line in the group. But on the next slide, please next slide. Uh, you can see that the, the program uh, detected specificity of, of three samples together. Three samples together are very separated according to, uh, to a group of genes, a group of isoforms, a group of mutation uh, regions, and RNA editing. Why three, not one? 
Okay, it appears that all these three are regionally derived from the same patient. So this specificity of gene expression, isopho, this is a memory of, of this specific patient from which uh, these three uh, cell lines uh, were uh, derived. Okay, uh, next slide, please. This is application of the same method to, uh, to another type of data uh, taken from TCG uh, database. Uh, and uh, here, 73 uh, triple negative breast cancer patients were taken together. And after that, the algorithm was applied. And the algorithm uh, found these triple associations. Not, not triple, but multiple associations. It means group of genes, group of isoforms, group of uh, uh, mutation, mutation uh, islands, uh, and all of them are providing uh, the same separation of four patients from all others. And these four patients are listed on the left, up, upper left uh, panel. Uh, ACA2QG, CBA1CG, uh, and so on. Uh, okay, what's the meaning of that? It should be studied uh, uh, through annotation of genes or through uh, considering what, what kind of mutations, what position of these mutations, or position of these islands of mutation, because here scores of islands were, were used. Uh, the next slide. Uh, the next slide is, is showing uh, the same data set, but here uh, gene expression and isoform expression and mutation scores selected only one patient. And here mutation score is extremely low in this patient, uh, lower left uh, uh, panel but expression of genes are uh, very high. Average expression over the set. And, uh, uh, okay, so there are several other examples here. Next slide, please. Uh, here, a couple of patients was selected, and you can see that this couple is indeed separated on the right. Uh, 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 separated from all others. This is PCA pictures, and according to averages, it is separated averages of... Uh, uh, actually, this is two, two omics data where you use RNA editing and expression of isoforms. So according to uh, expression of isoform, uh, we can see that uh, these processes, which are specific in these patients, are related to, to splicing. And RNA editing more or less uniformly distributed over the genome. So th this is a challenge, of course, but uh, already biological challenge to understand what is the specificity of these patients. And if we know clinical data about these patients, okay, we, we, we can say something. But how these clinical data uh, are related to the, to the RNA editing processes here or uh, gene expression? Processes. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, uh, here another se selection uh, based on mutation combined with, with gene expression. Three patients were selected as, as, as separated from all others. And what is interesting is that here mutations are com uh, condensed in chromosome 22. And, and, and three. Uh, and there are some publications on the left, the upper left, uh, related to, to specificity of these chromosomes uh, in, in breast cancer, in triple negative breast cancer. Uh, uh, okay, next slide. Uh, uh, this is another example. Uh, again, separation of two, two patients uh, and uh, based on, on combining omics data mutation and isoform expression, 
And uh, here, uh, according to isoforms, we can see something related to coagulin, and uh, mutations are uh, again uh, uh, concentrated in, in, chromos in chromosome 22 and 3. Okay, so th this is, I would say that this is powerful method, uh, uh, and we have several public domain methods for for uh, uh, for multi-omics integration, like I cluster plus, plus MDI, and things, and several other uh, algorithms. But the best of them, I cluster plus, can select only actually only one subset of patients somehow separated or, 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 or uh, clustered together. And by our method, we, we can detect hundreds, uh, hundreds different cases. Uh, probably some of them are noisy, but uh, majority looks as, as perfectly biological mean. Uh, okay, uh, the next slide uh, next slide, please. Uh, can, can you show the next slide? Yeah. So actually, Sahil turned on his fast share, so he's saying the wrong one. Do I have time a little bit, or, or this, this is over? Okay. Ilya? Okay, this is the systems virology uh, modeling yes. section. So uh, uh, th this is, uh, okay, here, here we have um, examples of modeling of, uh, of uh, viral infection. Uh, viral infection when uh, actually two viruses to, together in, in one cell uh, one major virus, one wild type, and another virus is, is um, defecting, interfering particles. So a portion of the genome of this virus is eliminated, and the question is if this defective, defective particle can be therapeutic particle. It means to, uh, to delay infection of wild type or, or eliminate this, this, uh, this infection. Okay, next slide. Uh, okay, this is, uh, there are several approaches we used, and uh, here the approach with um, ordinary differential equations uh, for cells, uh, for virus particles, for intracellular virus genome, for uh, capsid proteins, which is actually competition between BI particles and uh, wild type viruses. is going on uh, for capsid proteins in, in, in given and stochastic model, and we actually this, uh, the pipelines are looks again exactly the same as previously, and with these pipelines uh, we can define uh, parameters of, of the system, we can perform parameter fitting to, to experimental data, uh, we can uh, play with, uh, okay, maybe this next slide, Uh, okay, here uh, on this slide, uh, uh, how fitting to uh, to experimental data is performed for this uh, system of ODE uh, equations, um, ordinary differential equations. Uh, uh, okay, and so this is a relatively good fitting. Uh, and uh, on the next slide. Uh, uh, people can study this system, uh, preparing uh, posterior distribution of uh, parameters on, on the right uh, panel, uh, looking to sensitivity of parameters, uh, of uh, how statistically significant are parameters, different parameters. For instance, here the first parameter A is very far from zero. It means that this is a very significant part of the equation. And on the left panel, uh, uh, four uh, uh, solutions which are close to experimental data, 
we can understand what are the dependencies between parameters. Uh, I mean, we, it means user. User just playing with, with the same pipelines as, as we are playing with them. So dependencies between parameters presented as uh, Bayesian networks. So, so some positive uh, and negative influences of parameters to parameters from other parameters. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, okay, uh, another section of the platform is uh, for uh, for 3D, 3D structures, and uh, the basis here is uh, local similarities of three-dimensional structures um, of molecules and uh, proteins. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, Okay, so the typical molecule is, look, look, looks like that. And uh, actually, we are calculating some physical chemical uh, qualities of atoms based on three-dimensional uh, distribution of atoms here and, and particularity of atoms. And after that, instead of three-dimensional structures, we are presenting molecule as a set of some linear strings, strings of these keys. Uh, these physical chemical keys. And based on this uh, representation of molecule or any, uh, any uh, three-dimensional structure, uh, for instance, structure of protein, please next slide. Uh, we can find local similarity uh, where this linear representation are similar, like, like, like alignment of sequences. This is on the next slide. And uh, on the next slide, uh, we can see that after finding this local, uh, local, uh, local alignments, uh, local linear alignments, a three-dimensional alignment would be easily arranged uh, and actually superimposition. So here on the next, on this slide, you can see how atoms of two molecules are corresponding to each other based on linear, uh, uh, linear representation of three-dimensional structure, where uh, each atom has some keys like uh, hydro hydrogen bond acceptor or electropositivity. So they are matching, they are, they quality are matching each other. And uh, based on this matching, we can superimpose it and calculate quality of superimposition, um, which is here uh, like 13. This is a score of superimposition. OK, based on this score, uh, people can uh, screen libraries, huge libraries of molecules with, with one molecule of interest, for instance, some drug, uh, in order to find uh, uh, molecules which are not only uh, similar in three dimensional, geometrically similar, but also in their physical chemical, chemical qualities, physical chemical qualities of their uh, atoms. So probably by this way, if you if you know some some uh, uh, some drug, uh, for instance, uh, you can find uh, in the huge databases computationally other molecules which can work similarly to this drug, and after that to to perform uh, pharmaceutical uh, tests of these, of these molecules. First, of course, just um, EC50 uh, activity of this uh, molecules and things. Uh, okay, next slide. Also, the, the same technique can, can be used in order to find a uh, uh, putative position for docking of the molecule. Uh, and, uh, and the next slide is, uh, okay, some, some, some finding uh, uh, where a, a ligand to, to one protein appear, okay, with high probability will be ligand to another protein, uh, here polio 3A protein. Uh, original ligand was, was taken from completely different uh, protein. Okay, so this, this is some overview of what platform is doing. And the major, major point here is that uh, even even a kid can, can play with the platform just pressing, randomly pressing buttons.
patterns, but not randomly, because platform is suggested for each, for start button, what next button would be pressed. And by this way, a pipeline could be, can be prepared. And after that, a person will get a result. And this is a way to think what, what the result means after that. Uh, okay, thank you.